Hello friends, welcome. In the last video, I had discussed the contents of the ballast water convention. In this video, I will discuss the contents of the code for approval of ballast water management systems. So the BWMS code was adopted on 13th of April 2018 by MEPC resolution 300 session 72. So here is the page of contents. And before I dive into it, just wanted to clarify that this is a code for the convention that I had discussed in the previous video. So in the previous video, what we understand is that we require a ballast water management system on board the ship, which would prevent the environmental damage through the ballast water or the sediments. The standards were discussed in the convention and in the code, we'll be talking about how that is carried out. So let's start. So in the ballast water management system code, there are eight chapters and one annex. The annex is further divided into seven parts and one appendix. So let's go through the contents one by one. First is introduction. This chapter is an introduction to this particular code. And it says that this code is made for administration or the designated bodies so that they can make an assessment whether a ship complies with the D2 standards of the International Convention for the control and management of ship's ballast water and sediments. Chapter 2 is about background. In this, they discuss about the requirements which are laid down in the convention again as per the D3 standard. D3 is about approval requirement for ballast water management system and it also talks about the regulation D2. And as you know, D2 is about ballast water performance standard which is basically the amount of organisms which must be there after it has been treated. In the background, D2 standards are repeated like 10 viable organisms per cubic meter greater than or equal to 50 micrometers in minimum dimension. Then chapter 3 is definitions. In this chapter, the definition of active substance, ballast water management system, ballast water management plan, control and monitoring equipment, convention, failed test cycle, invalid test cycle, land-based testing, major component, sampling facilities, representative sampling, shipboard testing means a full-scale test of a complete ballast water management system, successful test cycle, system design limitation, test cycle, treatment rated capacity, valid cycle test, viable organisms, all these definitions are given. I will now quickly discuss two definitions which I feel may be important. So system design limitation. As per the definition it says system design limitation of the ballast water management system means the water quality and operational parameters determined in addition to the required type approval testing parameters that are important to its operation. And for each such parameter a low and or a high value for which the ballast water management system is designed to achieve the performance standard of regulation D2. So it's uh, quite a mouthful. So what it basically says, there are certain things which are required as per the standard D2. Okay. But in addition to that, when some system is running, there would always be additional features to it. So all those features which are provided in addition to the D2 standard, there must be a low and high value parameters that must be given that will be provided by the manufacturer and identified under the supervision of the administration. And this is basically a system design limitation. And next one is treatment rated capacity. So based on the ship's design, there'll be certain amount of water that your ballast water treatment system would be able to treat in a certain amount of time. So that amount expressed in cubic meters per hour is your treatment rated capacity. Then the next chapter is technical specification. So this particular section talks about the general technical requirements which a ballast water management system shall meet in order to obtain the type approval. So it is further divided into general principles for operation. It talks about the ballast water management system design and construction. So this is basically providing guidelines for the manufacturer. Then chapter five is type approval process. As the name itself suggests, it will tell you how to get the approval for the ballast water management system. And in this, it gives a reference of part one, two and three of the annex. 
and uh, part one is basically specifications for pre-test evaluation of the system documentation part two is test and performance specification for approval of ballast water management system part three is specifications for the environmental testing for approval of ballast water management system and there is a documentation which is required to be submitted before a ballast water management system is approved and there are five documents which are required the first is description and diagrammatic drawing of the ballast water management system second is the operation maintenance and safety manual third is hazard identification fourth is environmental and public health impact fifth is system design limitation so now that approval process has already started chapter 6 is about approval and certification procedure and once the approval and certification process is clear it's time for installation so chapter 7 is installation requirement following a type approval then chapter 8 is about installation survey and commissioning procedure following type approval so if we just quickly go through the contents once again it seems like a story there's an introduction then there's a background to it. There are certain definitions which they want you to be clear about. Then they technically specify what they're looking for. Then if the company finds an equipment which is technically as per the specification, they apply for the type approval process. And then the approval and certification procedure starts. And finally installation and installation survey. Then finally I come to the next part which is the annex. Annex has seven parts and one appendix appendix as usual gives you the form of the certificate type approval certificate for the ballast water management system first three parts of the annex i've already discussed which was basically about specification for pre-testing evaluation of the system documentation testing performance specification for the approval of ballast water management system specification for environmental testing for approval of ballast water management system so the first three are about how to test whether your ballast water management system complies with the technical specifications mentioned in chapter 4 of this code. Then part 5 of the annex is about sample analysis method for determining biological constituents in ballast water. Then part 5 is self-monitoring. So the requirement is that the ballast water management system shall monitor and store a number of parameters for detailed evaluation in addition to all system indicators and alerts shall be stored and available for inspection. So this is like your ODME system. Every kind of action that you perform on it must be recorded. Either you use it or you test it. So there are certain requirements which must be provided by all the systems like general information, ship's name, IMO number, ballast water management system manufacturer, operational parameters, system alerts, general alerts, operational alerts then the administration may require additional alerts depending on the design of the system and for future development the sdl parameters and the corresponding data such as range alarm limits alert delay etc be password protected on a level above what is required for normal operation then the system must be capable of exporting the stored data in the format which is easily readable like text, PDF, MS Excel, etc. Then part six is about validation of system design limitations. And the objective of system design limitation approach is twofold. First, it ensures the performance of the ballast water management system has been transparently assessed with respect to the known water quality and operational parameters that are important to its operation and including those that may not be specifically provided in this code. Secondly, it provides transparent oversight of the ballast water management system performance, claims by the manufacturers that may go beyond specific criteria in this code. Although validation of system design limitation yields information that is reported on type approval certificate, this information does not affect the eligibility of the ballast water management system to receive type approval. Then final part is 7 which talks about the type approval certificate and type approval report. In this part everything that is required to be there in the type approval certificate and type approval report is mentioned. And last but not the least the appendix it gives you the form of certificate 
how the certificate looks like and this is the copy which is mentioned in this code so this was the contents of the code in the next video i will be talking about the resolutions which are adopted by the conference and guidelines provided for uniform implementation of the ballast water management convention so the resolutions like g1 to g15 that will be discussed in the next part i hope this was a useful video for you if you have any feedback suggestion or comment then please do write down below all the best for your exams and as always thank you for watching